Passwords have long been the default method of authentication, but they come with serious drawbacks. Most people juggle dozens of passwords across different websites, apps, and services. This leads to frequent frustration. When prompted for a password, we often struggle to remember which one we used. To make things worse, passwords are highly vulnerable to phishing attacks. A convincing fake login page can easily trick the user into handing over their credentials. This problem led the W3C to create a new standard called Web Authentication in 2019 to enable a more secure and user-friendly login experience. Passkeys are the modern technology built on this web authentication standard that delivers on the promise of passwordless authentication. With the upcoming release of .NET 10, passkeys will be integrated directly into the ASP.NET Core Visual Studio templates, making it easier than ever for developers to implement this powerful authentication method. Now is the perfect time to dive deep into how passkeys work Let's break down the detailed workflow from a user's initial registration to a successful login. Let's first take a look at the registration workflow. Within the registration workflow, there are three parties. So we have the user here, and then we have the browser, and we have the web application. At this moment, the user already loaded the login page of the web application inside the browser. Now, in order to do the passkey registration, the user will have to first click on the register passkey button. Now, what happens after that is that the browser will run a piece of JavaScript that invokes the start passkey registration endpoint. It's an API endpoint, and it will provide user information to this endpoint. Now, the name of the endpoint is arbitrary. You can call it anything, but it will have to implement the start passkey registration functionality. So what is that functionality? Upon receiving the user information, the web application will have to generate a challenge. And the reason why it generates a challenge, we'll talk about that later. But right now, you just need to know that a challenge is a random piece of information. It generates the challenge, and then it will store the challenge with the associated user information temporarily on the server. And after that, it will return the challenge, the server information, along with the associated user information back to the browser. Now the browser will invoke the navigator.credentials.create method. So this is another piece of JavaScript that follows the web authentication standard. All major browsers have already implemented this method and depends on the operating system, the effect is going to be different. The operating system takes over at this moment, tries to verify the user by either prompt the user for face ID or touch ID or pin, depends on what type of devices you are on. Only after the verification of the user locally on the device is successful, the operating system will generate the public private key pair. Then it will use the private key to sign the challenge. Remember, we just received the challenge right here from the server. Now it's going to use the private key to sign the challenge. And after that, the web page will continue with the workflow by sending the signed challenge. And by the way, we call that attestation, as well as user information, server information, device information, and public key itself over to the server. Now, why do we need to send the device information? That's because to the same user account, we might have multiple different devices registered for the web of authentication, right? You can use your phone to log in, you can use your desktop computer login, you can use your tablet computer to log in. So you have different devices associated with the same user account. Therefore, the device information needs to be included over here. And after the user received the information, right? All of this information is gonna verify the validity of the user information. Right here, right, it's very important for the server to verify that this request, the second request, well, by the way, you can see that so far we only have the first request right, right here and the second request right here. This second request needs to be verified by the server that comes from the same user for the same purpose. And by the way, that's 
the reason why we need to have a challenge right here, right? For a traditional password authentication workflow, there's only one step over here. The user only just need to enter the username and password or the email and password, and then the server immediately create the user account and store the hashed password directly on the server. In passkey authentication or web authentication, it needs two steps. That's the reason why all of this information needs to be included. And that's the reason why the challenge needs to be also included in the second request. And once the server receives all of this information, especially the sign challenge, it's going to verify that this challenge that it receives, it matches the original challenge that is temporarily stored on the server, right? It also verify all of the other information. For example, the user information also needs to match with the information stored on the server. Uh, the server information, of course, it needs to understand that this comes from the same origin. And uh, the device information is just for information purpose, it's going to be stored later. And then the public key is also going to be stored with the account. So once it verifies all of this information, it will then create the user account, right? Finally, create the user account, stores the user information, the device information, and the public key information into database permanently. Now, this finishes the entire registration workflow. Now you can see here that the password or the PIN number or the face ID, touch ID, it will never leave the local environment over here, right? This happens strictly locally. Also the private key will never leave the local environment. The only thing that comes over to the server is the public key. Right, the only thing that is very sensitive is the public key. But because it's a public key, so it can be shared. It can be stored over here. And there's a reason why we need the public key. And that's when we talk about the second workflow. Before we finish the registration workflow, there are two places that we need to clarify here. So sending the information back to the server here is through invoking the finish passkey registration endpoints. This is a pair with the start passkey registration endpoint. This one makes the server generate the challenge and the second one finish passkey registration endpoint passes the signed challenge, which is the attestation back to the server. Another piece of information that we need to clarify is right here when the operating system generates the public and private key, it will also need to store the key pair along with the associate user. And that storage is locally. It's purely locally. It's not going to be exposed, except that it's going to send the public key over to the server in the next step. The private key is definitely only stored locally. That's why it's phishing attack resistance. Even some fake websites can initiate a web authentication workflow. Your face ID, touch ID, or pin ID will never leave your local environment and your private key will never leave your local environment. Hence, the phishing attack with the fake website will never be able to get anything useful in order to carry out the attack. And now let's look at the second workflow which is the login workflow or also called authentication workflow. This happens when the user already has the passkey authentication registered with the publication. At this moment, the user already loaded the login page inside the browser and the user first needs to enter the username and email and also clicks on the login with passkey button. After that, the browser will use JavaScript to invoke another endpoint. And, and this is going to be another pair of endpoint. But the first endpoint of the pair is called the start passkey authentication endpoint while providing the user information to the server. Again, the name of the endpoint or the routing template of the endpoint can be specified differently. It just needs to implement the start passkey authentication functionality. So what's that functionality? Once the server, which is the application, receives 
the user information over here. It locates the user account on the server and it generates a challenge for that account. And of course, it's going to temporarily store the challenge again on the server. Now it's going to return the challenge along with the user information back to the browser. The browser is going to invoke another JavaScript. It's called navigator.credentials.get. So this JavaScript method is also implemented by all of the major browsers. And depending on the operating system that the browser runs within, it's going to do different things. But the main thing is that the operating system takes over and verifies the user based on the user information that is provided right here. Right. And then what happens is similar to the registration process, it verifies the user by asking the user for face ID or touch ID or pin. Only when the user is verified here, and by the way, the verification here is purely locally, right? It verifies this user. Then it's going to retrieve the private key associated with the user. Remember, in the registration process, we store the private key with the user account right, on the local machine or local device. And then it will use that private key to sign the challenge. And we call the sign challenge the assertion. Now, after we have the sign challenge, we're going to trigger the second endpoint of this pair. And the second endpoint is called the finish pass key authentication. It's going to send the sign challenge, which is the assertion, the user information, and the device information over to the server. Once the server receives the information, it will use the user information and device information to look for the corresponding public key. And then it verifies the sign challenge using the public key. So this is a mathematical cryptographic process here. The algorithm will take the public key, the sign challenge, and the original challenge. And then we'll go through the algorithm to make sure that the sign challenge actually matches the original challenge. And when the match is confirmed, that means the private key that is used to sign the challenge is indeed the private key that was paired with the public key stored on the server. Depending on the result of that process, that algorithm, it will either log in the user or rejects the user. So that finish the authentication process. Notice here that you cannot use the public key to sign anything to get the same signature that matches the signature generated by the private key. Therefore, even when hackers hack the web server and retrieves the public key, it won't be able to do anything with it. So overall, you can see that here in this authentication process, right, or, or we can call it the login process, the main thing is the challenge here, right? We're not passing the password from the client to the server and then verify that password. We are using cryptographic algorithm to make sure that the local user over here possess the private key that corresponds to the public key related to the user account. And when that correspondence is made sure, then we know that it is this user, right? The local user, which corresponds to the remote user account on the server who tries to log in. Now you know why we call this passwordless authentication. Right? There's no password going on within the authentication process, but we are sure that the user who wants to log in is the user who claims the user is. Right? That's the definition of authentication. So throughout the explanation of the workflow, I have chosen to use some technical terms like assertion, attestation, but most of the information here are less technical on purpose so that you understand exactly how this workflow goes with enough technical details. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next one.